it only took a couple days for Pat Kelsey to already bring in some players via the transfer portal. On today's episode of the Locked on Louisville podcast, we're explaining why you should be excited by the additions of Rain Smith and James Scott. Stay tuned. You are Locked on Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On for $20 off of your first purchase. And as always, I want to personally thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On Louisville Podcast is free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team every day. Just a couple days after Pat Kelsey was hired to be the next Louisville men's head basketball coach. The Cardinals started to receive commitments out of the portal to College of Charleston transfers. Rain Smith and James Scott are following their old head coach and will be Cardinals next season. It's good news, and I think these are necessary commitments for the Cardinals, and I'll tell you why you should be excited. At the conclusion of the show, we will discuss why Louisville really needs to pull, put the full court press on North Texas transfer Jason Edwards. So we begin with some very, very good news. Um, When Pat Kelsey was hired to be the next Louisville men's head basketball coach, a lot of the questions were concerning his recruiting. Was he going to be able to jump into the transfer portal and bring in almost a whole new team? We figured that some players would be returning. They get most of the players from the transfer portal, but that there were a couple of players at the College of Charleston that Kelsey would likely try to bring over. And boy, was that right. Rain Smith and James Scott both following their old head coach. We begin with Rain Smith, who is officially the first commitment of the Pat Kelsey era here in the Ville. Um, Rain Smith, known for his three-point shooting, fifth in Division I with 112 made three-pointers this season. Ethan Moore, host uh, or co-host of uh, Louisville Sports Live on ESPN 680 and 93.9 The Ville, tweeted out a very, very sad but eye-opening statistic. Rain Smith had 112 made three-pointers, right? Louisville as a team... In 2023-24, only had 175. Now, it's sad because, well, you have one player having over half of Louisville's total amount, but it's eye-opening because it just shows you how distinguished of a perimeter shooter Rain Smith is. He was the leading scorer for the Cougars this past year, 12.8 points per game. Spent three seasons with the College of Charleston and averaged in double figures right away. And for all three seasons, he has the freshman record for most threes in a year with 95 in the 2021 22 season. Six foot two, 190 pound sharpshooter from um, Australia. So there is some international influence with his game. Um, He's a very, very technical player that does well floating off of screens, utilizing screens to uh, create his own shot. He is pretty dynamic in terms of being a shooter. He is not just a, um, you know, step into the shot type player. He can dribble into his own three. He can create his own shot. Probably going to be relied upon at Louisville as mainly a three-point shooter, but has shown the ability to be a knockdown shooter in spot-up situations, coming off of screens, um, off the pin down, you name it. Just overall very, very dynamic. Shooting 39.4% from behind the arc, overall 41% from the field, and he had, I believe it was a... 93% I'm sorry 86% from the free throw line the past two seasons he was over 90% so very good from the free throw line solid three-point shooter and a pretty underrated passer and Louisville fans are like finally damn man it's about time because it feels like since Ryan McMahon left 
Louisville really hasn't had um, a go-to bona fide shooter. I know that we thought that um, Matt Cross and Quinn Slazinski were going to be those players, but ultimately they really never ended up being knocked down, you know, sharpshooters, at least to my knowledge, from my recollection. But Rain Smith coming to Louisville, very, very distinguished three-point shooter leading the College of Charleston in points. And it makes a lot of sense. Some people will say, well, it's it's a mid-major addition. How good is he going to be at the Power Five? You need better players than this. Let me go ahead and get this out of the way. There is a there's a sort of a misconception when it comes to mid-major guys transferring to the Power Five. Now, not every mid-major player going to the Power Five is going to have a ton of success. But there is a large enough sample size with a plethora of different players across the country over the past 10 to 15 years that suggest if you're going to go ahead and write off a mid-major player just because of the origin of the start of his college career, it's not the right thing to do. I mean, look here at Louisville, Carly Jones, Damian Lee, Trey Lewis, the list goes on. I mean, Dalton Connect, who plays for Tennessee, fantastic. I mean, the list goes on. There's so many different names out there that suggest that more players, more often, than, I'm not going to say more often than not, but more players than you would think can go from the power five or go from the mid-major level and succeed at the power five. Now, there is the question of whether that um, skill set is going to project at the next level. Now, I will say that Rain Smith is an underrated ball handler. He is very efficient around the rim. I think 65% inside the um you know inside the paint he also is a perhaps underrated passer as well i don't necessarily think that he is a point guard at the power five level but a secondary ball handler that's able to facilitate having a guy that really having your whole team that can pass is, is such a virtue to have and i like the skill set that smith has but his impact at the next level is predominantly going to be based on his three-point production. I hate to really put things into a box, but he's known as a sharpshooter. The majority of his game is three-point shooting, and uh, if he's not succeeding at the Power 5 level at Louisville shooting the three-point shot, then he will struggle from an overall standpoint, but he's a very, very good shooter. Doesn't need a ton of space, can dribble into his own shot, catch and shoot situations, but also um, 25 of his, I think actually no, 18 of his three pointers made this year came from behind 25 feet of distance. So limitless range. It seems um, I look for rain Smith to fill the Ryan McMahon role. And what I mean by that is not just a guy who can come down and knock down shots, but a player who's going to play, you know, anywhere from, I don't know, 22 to 27 minutes a game. He could start the majority of the games, but I, I would expect him to really, really be in when Louisville needs an influx of offense. Ryan McMahon wasn't just utilized as a shooter late on in his collegiate career, but more so a, a secondary ball handler, being able to stretch the floor and allow others to operate. When you talk about shooters, you can't just focus – on what that shooter is able to do scoring the ball wise, but also the impact that he allows for the rest of his team. How does it affect what the opposing defense does in terms of coverage? If you have a guy who's shooting the ball really well, you have to really um, get up in his space because of the gravity surrounding of what he can do. So I like this addition. Number one, he knows Pat Kelsey's system and you can't just bring in 12 to 13 new guys and always expect it to work out. When you bring back some players from Louisville's team and you bring in some players from College of Charleston that succeeded at the mid-major level in the Colonial Athletic Conference and have played for Pat Kelsey, they know what he's looking for on the court. They know his scheme. And I think that that allows for a, an easier transition for the team. So um, I, I like this addition. I I think not even just me, but everyone sort of identified Rain Smith as a player that a lot of fans were looking at saying, okay, yeah, we need to bring this guy in. And a lot of it was because Louisville's three-point shooting over the past couple of years has just been downright pitiful, but also because of how well he played with Impact LC system. So I like this move here for Louisville. 
Um, whether he's a starting level guy or not, I think that he's at the very least going to be in the rotation. And it just makes a lot of sense. And, you know, he started in 28 of the 35 games. I would expect him to be a player that's going to play a good amount of minutes for Louisville. I'm not necessarily so sure if he's going to start, but if he does, it wouldn't be the worst thing. I think what he brings is a skill set that really could help. And if he's able to um, get his shot off and find his shot against better athletes who are going to close out quicker and contest a little bit tougher, um, if he can be a respectable shooter for Louisville against better competition, then you are obviously – talking about a very, very good addition to this team. But he wasn't the only College of Charleston player that was added to the team. James Scott, freshman big man who played, you know, didn't play a ton of minutes of nightly action last season. But what he did on the court reminds me of a former Louisville Cardinals star. And I'll identify who that is here coming up momentarily after we tell you about our friends over at Game Time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which means getting tickets even faster and easier. Price on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. On the app, that's my favorite experience. You can use the features listed and customize your spot and the supplemental as inspiration. Um, it just allows you to see last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, etc. Save up to 60% off buying last-minute tickets for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, etc. Toggling this feature of all-in pricing shows the total upfront with no surprise fees at checkout. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create the code or create an account. Redeem the code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Cardinal fans, thanks again for making Locked On Mobile your first listen of the day. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume without that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today. A free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest, the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It isn't hard for fans to be encouraged by Rain Smith joining the program because he was Charlton's or Charleston's leading scorer. Even though he was a mid-major guy, he was the leading scorer for Pat Kelsey's team. I've seen people a little bit hesitant to be encouraged by the addition of James Scott. For those who don't know, the Cardinals added a second College of Charleston transfer um, in as many days. They added James Scott, six foot eleven, two hundred and ten pound native of Fayetteville, North Carolina, um, averaged five points per game, 3.4 rebounds per contest this past season for um, the Cougars. He played in, I believe it was, I think he played in all 35 of the games, only started four of them, but was limited in his action. He actually, for the amount of playing time or lack thereof, his production level was pretty solid. He played about 16 minutes a game, averaged five points a game. What really, really is encouraging for me is that he shot 79% from the field. Now, a lot of his offense was pretty much strictly around the rim, but he was very good when his number was called. Free throw percentage has to be better, 43 or 44%. He was 22 of 50 from the line, so has to improve there, has to be better. Rebounding the ball has to add a little bit more weight to his six foot eleven frame, but in 16 minutes of nightly action, he averaged 1.3 blocks per game. Coming into college, he was revered as one of the better shot blockers on the Adidas circuit as a senior. So the talent is there. He's extremely athletic. Um, it looks like he jumps on a pogo stick every time that he plays. Uh, the athleticism is incredible. 
He reminds me of a former Louisville Cardinal great in his freshman season. If you remember Montrez Harrell as a freshman, didn't really have a ton of um, of an impact up until late in the year. But when his number was called as a freshman, what happened? Well, he showed a ton of power. He showed a ton of energy. But looking at that first year, 5.7 points per game, shot the ball 57% from the field. Excuse me, sorry, I had to sneeze, so I had to mute the mic. But um, overall, pretty similar statistics. Now, one was in the Big East for Louisville. One was in the Colonial Athletic Association. So a little bit of a different level of uh, competition. But I think what James Scott brings to the table is very Montrez Harrell-esque. Now, is he ever going to have the impact that Trez ended up having later on in his college career to where he went from six points per game to 14 the next season? and started each and every game for the next two seasons? Probably not. But I, I think writing this edition off so quickly is being a little bit premature here. I You obviously have to wonder if a player is going to live up to the Power 5 expectations, if he's going to be able to develop enough. But looking from you know his high school tape, some of the tape at the College of Charleston, which admittedly there, there's not a ton for James Scott. There's potential there. The athleticism is there. And if you hone in that skill set and you refine the tools on both ends of the court, I think that James Scott at some point in his global career will be able to be at the very least a rotational player. Look, you can't add 13 possible starters to the team. And that's something that I can't stress enough is that you are pretty much going to have to replace almost the whole exact a whole entire roster unless you know you have a couple of people return which i think that they will but the point still stands i think that you're probably still having to add 10 new players to this team you can't add 10 players that are expecting to be starters and they can't all be grad transfers either you need a couple of developmental pieces that's why on the weekly mailbag last week, when we talked about roster construction, um, talked about the transfer portal, what Louisville needs to do in the transfer portal, I remember saying I wouldn't mind going out and getting like three, maybe four at the most, developmental guys that you can develop into very good players in the upcoming years. Because even if he's not ready in 2024, 2025, that doesn't mean you wasted a scholarship because if he's ready the next year, well, then you succeeded. I understand that the transfer portal, it's known that you can flip a roster like that. It doesn't take a lot of time at all. But if you're having to rely on that every single year, like Arkansas or some other teams in the country, you're putting yourself at a lot of risk. So I don't mind having developmental players that can join this program. Obviously, the bottom line for me is that I'm going to trust Pat Kelsey. And Kelsey coached James Scott last year. And if he feels like, you know what, I believe in the potential. I think that he is going to have a solid college career. I believe in his potential so much that I'm going to bring him to the University of Louisville to play, with, to play for me. Then who are we to suggest that he's wrong? Obviously. You know, not the head coach isn't always right in terms of scouting. We saw that with, with Kenny Payne, with, with a couple of players he brought in. But you have to trust the head coach uh, until he gives you a reason not to. And uh, at, at this point, I'm in a wait and see approach. I think that James Scott is also a player that multiple NBA draft analysts have sort of identified as a player to watch for the next couple of seasons. Because he's got a, a ton of potential. He's got a fairly solid-looking jump shot, not a ton of mechanical issues with his shot. Now, he's not going to be a guy that next season is going to be able to step out and um, shoot a three. He didn't uh, attempt a single three-pointer this past year, but I look for him to be able to expand his game. He's got a ton of length, being six foot 11, 210 pounds, runs very well for his size, and has a ton of athleticism. So, I'm intrigued by this edition. I think that that's my takeaway is that I'm excited and I'm intrigued because the the physical attributes are there with the size and the um, athleticism. But is he going to be able to 
hone in those skills, especially on the offensive end. And if he's able to be an end of the rotation guy next year and have a large role the year after that, then that I think that that's a very, very good sign for the Cardinals. Um, really, really interested to see what James is going to be able to do, what his role is going to be. But like I said, one thing you have to focus on is um, if you're recruiting 13 guys, you can't have 13 possible starters. Scott was a three-star level guy, didn't have a ton of Power 5 interest coming out of high school, but he entered the portal yesterday, and Louisville added him to the team today. So obviously, Pat Kelsey is a believer in what James Scott is is going to be able to bring to a uh, to a program, and I think that this is this is a pretty solid move. I I think that um, ultimately it's going to be a situation of the expectations for next season. But even if he's not in next year's plans. Um, he'll have two years of college eligibility remaining after this year, assuming he doesn't redshirt. And, and I think that if you're, if this is a play for the future, I think it's a good idea. So obviously you have to go out and you have to add some big time players from the portal, but going out and addressing depth and adding some solid players is key. Speaking of big time players that the Cardinals are going after, Jason Edwards has heard from the Cardinals program the first team all AAC member would be a huge boost to next year's roster. We're going to explain why Louisville needs to um, put the full court press into effect here momentarily after we tell you about our friends over at Amazon Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. It offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire TV stick that you can plug into your existing TV to provide access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Fire TV recently created the Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. That includes all of us here at Locked On and most of the big pro leagues and college conferences as well. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash TV. Moving right on along into the final segment of this um, Sunday, late Sunday edition of the show. There were a couple of commitments this weekend, so I wanted to have a Sunday episode before we ended March. Jason Edwards. It was announced um, on Friday from On Three's Jamie Shaw that the Cardinals have contacted North Texas star Jason Edwards. Edwards led the Mean Green in scoring 19.1 points per game in his only season so far at North Texas. Um, six foot sophomore from Atlanta, Georgia, was a first team All American Athletic Conference selection this past season. He shot the ball 35% from three, 81% from the free throw line, and 43 from the field. So as I mentioned, to be able to flip your roster and really contend for an NCAA tournament appearance, you have to add depth. You have to add players that fit your culture that you're looking to install. You have to add players that um, I think are familiar with your system if you're having to replace a whole team. But you also have to go out and get some of the best transfers out there, in my opinion. And Jason Edwards is – uh, considered by many to be a top 10 transfer in the portal as we speak. Um, his ability to create his own shot is electric, reminds me, uh, or could have an impact sort of like Tyler Perry did. And if you're a Louisville fan, obviously you know the name Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry coincidentally came from North Texas. He averaged 17.3 points per game his season before he transferred to Kansas State and then 15.3 at Kansas State this past season. So you would be looking for sort of a same jump like um, Perry, if you're talking about Jason Edwards, sort of similar in size. Perry is 5'11", Edwards is 6 foot, and, and there's not a lot of uh, limitations to Edwards' range inside the half court. Very, very solid shooter, like I said, was a volume shooter, averaged seven three-pointers, um, per game, 
from the field. Um, now, Tyler Perry was a little bit better in that regard at North Texas, 41% on seven and a half attempts. But the point still stands as you're looking for some starting level players. I, I think that Edwards is – a player with fantastic potential. He also has two years remaining of college eligibility. So there is the opportunity to have him for multiple years. So it makes just a ton of sense. And the um, creation in the half court from Edwards, not necessarily known too much as a, uh, a point guard average 1.4 assists per contest. So that does make some people wonder about the fit, having an undersized two guard like um jason edwards six foot he's more of a combo but with those assist numbers probably more of a two guard kind of gives me um carly jones vibes now three-point shooting he's better than carly jones but a smaller guard that um can store can score in a variety of different ways it, it would make sense for louisville to really prioritize him because you have to go out and you have to get some players that can be your number one, number two, maybe even number three scoring options. I don't think Edwards um, – I think you got to get Edwards to add to your starting lineup, and if you were able to do that, then you're in a very, very good spot. He doesn't have to be your number one overall scorer, but if he has to be, I don't think that that's the worst situation. But I buy into the potential here. You look at the three-point shooting ability. He's very, very crafty with the ball in his hands. Um, looking back to the game log from this season, had 23 points in the NIT against Seton Hall, had 16 against LSU, uh, 26 against Florida Atlantic, 32 against Florida Atlantic earlier on in the year, um, had 30 against Memphis, 31 against South Florida, had multiple 30-point games, um, and, and just was fantastic, 37 against Tulane. The list goes on. So 22 against LSU earlier on in the season. Only had, I think, two games this whole season scoring under 10 points per contest. So Jason Edwards would make a lot of sense. I would like to see Louisville go after him with a full court press. I think he has a skill set that obviously you need if you're Pat Kelsey. He can shoot the ball. He is Electric in transition fits the offensive identity of a Pat Kelsey coach team. And just I keep coming back to this term, it makes a ton of sense. So we're going to see what happens in terms of his visits. Speaking of Edwards, Terrence Edwards Jr., the Sun Belt Player of the Year from James Madison, will be on campus on Tuesday. We will talk about um, what he could bring to the program on tomorrow's episode of the show. So be sure to. Stick around and um, or stick around and wait for that. But that's going to wrap up today's episode of the show. Everyone have a great day. We'll see you right back.